In this short video we take a look at the home of Sir Walter Scott, one of Scotland's most famous writers of the early 19th century, having spent part of his youth living in the Scottish borders with his grandparents. As a successful writer he was to buy a rundown farmhouse called Cartley Hole, just outside the town of Melrose. He spent the latter part of his life buying more and more land and subsequently extending the property to his own specification in the Scottish baronial style. It was a labour of love that was only possible through his success as a writer. However, it came at a cost when he was declared bankrupt due to the failure of his publishing business. His creditors allowed him and his family to continue living there while he continued furiously writing his way out of debt. He was still writing up until his death in 1832. So he not only left his novels, poems and writings as a legacy, but he also left this stunningly beautiful building. But not only did he build a beautiful home, but he also preserved parts of historical Edinburgh, perfectly displayed by this door on the first floor, which was in fact the old toll booth prison door. He also purchased the base of the old Mercat Cross from Edinburgh's High Street, and it is now the centrepiece of the courtyard. However, once you step through the front door into the entrance hall, it is then that you see how much went into this home. You're immediately welcomed by an impressive suit of armour and many other historical artefacts. Further on, you come to Sir Walter's study, where he would have written some of his most famous novels. For inspiration, he added his own library, where he kept his extensive collection of books. As you walk through, you can't help feeling that Sir Walter is keeping an eye on you. It would be fair to say that Sir Walter was also a collector, not only of books, but in the room commonly known as the Armoury, we find one of the most impressive private collections of weapons. In the dining room, you can only imagine some of the sumptuous dinner parties that were held here. Certainly, his detailed diaries describe parties that would extend into the wee hours. The drawing room would be where he and his guests would retire for further entertainment, surrounded by the wallpaper-clad walls hand-painted in China. For a building that exudes taste and a preference for the best things in life, it is actually rather a shock when you walk along Scott's rather eccentric religious corridor. Some of the casts are taken from old ecclesiastical buildings. However, the angels reflect some of the carvings that can be found at Roslyn Chapel, a place that Scott loved dearly and he also wrote about quite extensively. But it is the grounds outside, all 1,400 acres, overlooking the River Tweed that complement Abbotsford House perfectly. This is a treasure well worth visiting. 